So after we have a separation of concerns architecture and we applied the dependency injection, the modules are nicely separated. But if we look closely, there's still this dependency between the different layers, right? So if we look at this, we can see that it has a product dependencies to uh, both the repository and the service. Right, well, that's that's fine, right? Because it needs to do dependency injection. So this is where the infrastructure is. It will have dependency on all the layers. That's fine. But the key here is it depends on the service, right? So Windows Forms depends on the service. And then from the service, you can see it has a product dependency on the repository. And then the service uh, depends on repository. And the repository then in turn depends on, of course, it depends on the domain. Everybody depends on the domain. So the key here is there's this dependency from the UI to the business logic, from the business logic to the data access, right? So if we put this in a diagram, it will look like this, right? The layers are still dependent on each other, and the dependencies are going one direction, and eventually it points to the database. It, it seems that does make sense because business is always data-driven. Right, business applications is always data-driven applications. Right, there's uh, business uh, business always uh, depends on data. Most business, right, hands up business applications should be data-centric. Right, so our layered architecture is essentially a data-centric architecture. But should we question whether this is the best thing to do? Should we take it for granted? Or should we question it? Is this the best architecture? Is there better ones? Right, so to answer that question, uh, we shall look into what problem this type of data-centric architecture causes. Because architectures help us convert developers' thoughts to code, right, to computer language. With a data-centric architecture, developers often find ourselves focus our mind on the data. Right, we would look at the requirement first, and then develop the data structure, right? And then we will go backward, right? Repository, service, and then UI. All their terminologies would be data access, right? And then we'll go to the business logic, and then we go to UI. Right? And the problem with that is that our code files. Uh, or folder structures don't reflect requirements. In other words, they don't reflect the intent of the application, right? Or the intent of the business. So let's take a look at the, our uh, Visual Studio. Look at this structure. Do you know what this application is for? Right? Perhaps you you know, right? The the, the you know it's a cargo shipping application because it has the name in it. Right, but that's probably the only thing you know. Even when you open up the service layer, you, this name is a uh, data-centric naming approach, right? Because there is a table that is called trip segment. That's why we name it this way, right? And then when the subclication becomes bigger and bigger, uh, you will see a whole bunch of all kinds of different things in here, not just use cases. It will have all kinds of things in here, right? Not just business intent. It will have private method, it will have uh, um, uh, public methods. As long as the UI requires something, you're gonna, you're gonna stuff something into the service layer for whatever purpose that you wanna achieve. That's the problem with code layered structure. It is data centric. It does not reflect the intent. Right, and the problem with not reflecting the intent is that, but well, there are many problems, right? One of them is that there's maintain maintainability problems. Right? When you're in the process of de development, that's fine, but then after a few months, you have to fix some bugs, for example, or develop some new features, right? The bugs come with business intent in it. It will not say there's something wrong in this layer, right? It will say something wrong when I do this. Right, there's behavior, which is all business intent. They will say behaviors are wrong and then for bugs, right? And then if there's new features, they're gonna say we would expect this behavior, but it doesn't say anything about 
you know, you're gonna do this in this layer, you're gonna do it in that layer, right? So there's a disconnect between the architecture and the business intent, right? And then as developers, after a few months when we do this, we can't even find the places. It's hard to locate because of that disconnect from the business requirements, from the business intent to the, uh, the architecture itself. So the second problem with the data-centric layered architecture is that, like I mentioned in the previous lesson, that the service layer where the business logic is encapsulated is dependent on the repository and the repository is dependent on the data store, right, the database. Because of this dependency, some of the business logic can leak into the repository or the database. Right? We can have stop procedures implementing the business logic. And on the other hand, the service layer, because of the lack of intent that we talked about in the previous lesson, business logic can also leak into the UI. Right? And this leak will cause a lot of problems when switching technologies. For example, when you change from ASP.NET web forms technology to ASP.NET Core MVC, because of your, your business logic leaked into the UI, you will have a lot of work to do to rewrite all those business logic, right? And when you change from MVC to ASP.NET Core MVC, well, you end up have to rewrite some of the stuff as well. Right, and then uh, if you move on to use front-end frameworks, uh, let's say you move on to Angular, if then when you want to change to Re React, you have a lot of a lot of code to rewrite as well in order to uh, encapsulate that part of business logic that is leaked into the UI, right? And of course, if if your business logic leaks into the repository layer, uh, then when you want to switch different repository, different data stores. Uh, you will face similar problems. Although that doesn't happen too often, but there's a possibility. So this is the second problem of the data-centric layered architecture, where business logic tend to leak to the repository as well as the UI because of lack of intent. So you don't have a very well encapsulated business logic layer, right? the service layer. Before we can find the answer to know how to solve this lack of intent problem, let's analyze the data-centric layered architecture a little bit more in order to find the nature of this layered architecture so that we can find a solution to solve uh, these two problems that we talked about previously. So the way we apply separation of concerns in a data-centric architecture is often technology-based. When looking at a slightly complex project, we see something like this, right? So we would have, you see this folder is, you know, it's technology, right? And then, yeah, we see a little bit of business, but then we see database, we see web API, Right? And then inside it, you see, you see the controllers, serializers. These are kind of the patterns, right? design patterns of the framework itself. So mostly this type of architecture is technology-based, right? In other words, the photo structure, the file names, they're all corresponding to the different technologies that, that are utilized by the project. Therefore, in a data-centric architecture, things are mostly modulized based on technologies. And the technologies-driven architecture is often horizontally sliced, right, like this. Each slice is a layer, and each layer tend to be pretty big, right, very flat. So imagine this rectangle is stretched out. That's what a normal-sized project looks like when it uses layered architecture, right? It's horizontally sliced. So on the other hand, we have this uh, purely intent-driven architecture, right? And the files and folders in this type of architecture uh, will look something like this, right? So by looking at this, right, we would see that this is a kind of like car rental company, I guess, right? It's application for that. And then you, there's a back office and there's a front office. 
brand deals with different aspects of the business. Business intent is very clear, or we can say that the application intent for that business is very clear. Uh, the folder structures and the file names are all corresponding to the requirements. So, but, but is this the right way to go? Is this the right architecture to follow? Let's see whether there, there's any problem uh, in this pure intent, business intent driven architecture. Sometimes it's called screaming architecture. The reason why it's called screaming architecture is because uh, it tends to scream out the intent, the business intent. Let's see whether there are any problems with this type of architecture, right? So this type of architecture appears to be vertically sliced, right? Instead of horizontally sliced, this is vertically sliced, where you would have your business intent separated into vertical slices. If we use the previous example, you would have back office, uh, car rental, and then within it, you have contacts of it, all vertically sliced. But if you look closely, go back and look closely, there's controller, right? Within each, you would have controller, serializer, right? So actually, this is not purely vertically sliced. If you look closely, you would still see uh, within each slice, you would have different layers. So it's not only vertically sliced, but also horizontally sliced. So it results in a very complicated structure. And Worst thing is when you have to, for example, this uh, service layer would have to reference their repository, right? So you have a web. And that's, to me personally, I would think that's a overkill. So we need to seek a middle ground. We know that lack of intent is a problem, but in order to expose the intent, the screaming architecture, to me, it appears to be too extreme and that results in complexity again. So we have this technology driven architecture and then we have this pure intent based architecture. We have seen the problem with both. We ask ourselves, is there a better way to go? Is there a better structure to follow which can take our both? Right? And then that's the middle ground that we're trying to seek. Right? The architecture to take care of both technologies and the intent. There's another type of architecture, which is called onion architecture or clean architecture, right? Is this architecture a sort of middle ground? Well, that I cannot say for sure, but let's see whether at least this uh, architecture solves those two problems that we, uh, that I have presented in, in the previous lectures. Right? So there's this lack of intent problem and there is this business logic leaks into other layers problem, right? So this onion architecture is again, a layered architecture, right? It's not anything new, it's layered architecture, but the diagrams put it into onion layers, right? Instead of uh, vertical or horizontal layers for a reason, uh, that's because in the core, we have the core business and use cases, right? And they are the dependencies of everything else, not the other way around. The core business is a layer that encapsulate the logic that exists regardless there's a application or not, right? Businesses uh, were used to use pen and paper. They didn't depend on applications, right? Those business logic that that used to be carried out with pen and paper uh, were mostly the core businesses, right? Core business logic. Whereas the use cases encapsulate the business logic that exists only because of the application, right? The use cases are the use cases of the application, but both this blue and yellow layer uh, consist the core of the onion. The dependencies here, the dependence direction is very, very important. That is point inside, which means that the core depends on nothing, right? And use cases uh, depends on the core. The use case does not depend on the database, right? Neither the database nor the UI or anything else. The use cases encapsulate the business intent, right? Or the application intent for the business only depends on the core business layer.
So this is the Anin architecture, right? And then you have UI points to the use cases, which is understandable. But now, here's a weird thing. The database also depends on the use cases as well as the core business, right? It understandable that the, the database depends on the core business, which contains the model classes, right? I'm going to demonstrate that in a bit. But for now, we can see this weird thing here is that the database actually depends on the use cases, right? How does that work? It is actually pretty simple. Database here is created as a plugin that plugs into the use case layer. Right. For example, in uh, in C language, we have this print f, right, and sc or scan f. Normally, output or input uh, to the monitor or from the monitor console. But uh, by importing different libraries, you can output to printer or scanner or other devices. Right. How is that achieved? Uh, because the print f. Is it's not dependent on the, uh, the the monitors or the printers or the uh, the scanner. It, the printf is actually uh, this this library contains a abstraction of the input and output uh, devices, right? This abstraction controls what functionalities these different input and output devices need to implement, right? Uh, the monitor driver program or printer driver program or scanner driver pro program or anything else that wants to uh, have to be the input output devices of the of the computer will have to implement this abstraction right and the print f does not work with the driver programs directly it just it, it just works with the abstraction and that's uh, that's called the plugin-based uh, development, right? Or, or these are the plugins, right? So if we create database as a plugin, right? Uh, as long as we have abstraction inside the use case layer, then we can have database uh, plugin to the uh, the use case layer. Or if we see any type of um, uh, dependencies that can be plugged in we can still we can also plug them in right we can create them as plugins right like I said the only thing you need to do is to uh, have a abstraction abstraction class inside the use case layer right so let's take a look at the the source code that we use uh, we apply the onion architecture to the trips application that we demonstrated previously.